So um, my name is Christian Blume. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Cleverbridge. And um, I really appreciate having a couple of minutes of your attention. Uh, when Marco asked me to keynote at this event, um, I figured, uh, yes, I can do this. Seven to eight minutes is something that I can handle. And um, I want to share some, some ideas about uh, where Cleverbridge has um, come from and where we're going and um, give you a little bit of an idea of who is Cleverbridge. Cleverbridge is an e-commerce provider for uh, premium software companies offering uh, perpetual license models as well as uh, SaaS models. Um, uh, we generally partner with clients that um, have experience in the global e-commerce economy and really have embraced the internet as their primary sales channel and we have clients that are doing 100% of their revenues through our systems and we enable end consumers to actually place orders over the internet through any connected device. Um, we started the company um, in 2005 and uh, with seven founders um, who actually invested all of their savings into the company, so we're a completely bootstrap company. And um, because we saw a very unhealthy consolidation in the market in 2004, and uh, we figured that if we bring some new technology into the market, we can probably um, enable clients to actually reach another level of driving their sales uh, into a direction that they had previously not achieved. And um, we did that by um, actually building a very flexible and a highly end consumer tailored um, um, uh, solution that it would, would allow to easily place orders over the internet. Um, we founded the company uh, in the US, in Chicago, as well as over in, in, in Germany, um, because we figured that it was necessary to actually engage in those areas where we were going to do business um, and, and, and really support the, the, the needs of the end consumers as well as the clients that we would be, would be supporting. We've expanded over into Shanghai and also into Tokyo at the beginning of this year. And um, we started our business in 2005 and 11 months after we actually um, started the, the, um, the business, we had our first client that actually said, you know what, I'm going to try and give you guys a campaign uh, and let you do my, my e-commerce uh, business. And, um, fantastically enough, we had 500 orders, which took us to uh, an overall of 15,000 euros in revenues in, in the whole of 2005. So it looked like we got ourselves a money-making machine here, you know, but it wasn't enough, obviously, to pay our bills. And um, so um, what we really did is we needed to um, go much more into, uh, into acquiring additional uh, clients for our business. Um, just a quick overview of um, how our product actually works. In the simplest permutation, we actually start with a buy button is placed on the software publisher's website. And um, we basically um, offer the product in 30 languages so end consumers can, can pay um, using all sorts of different payment methods. Uh, we don't care whether they place an, an order um, in, in China, whether they place an order in Japan and utilizing all of the different payment methods that are needed in order to uh, to pay down there. Um, we have um, the, 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 a fully fledged multivariate testing environment built into our solution, which was key to prove that we would actually increase conversion rates and generate much higher revenues than any of the competitors would be doing. And um, obviously, um, there's a ton of different features that I can probably brag about for uh, three quarters of an hour, but I don't want to bore you to death, but this is just a couple of the things that we do, um, the, the, the audits that we have passed in order to um, actually sell the products online. Um, the, we, we do everything from, from the payment down to the delivery of the product and the end consumer support. Uh, we, we support service providing models, which allows the, um, the merchant to, uh, to actually be the software publisher. Uh, we also support a reseller model, which is the most typical thing that software publishers do um, uh, in actually reselling through our system. We have a .NET based platform, which, uh, is admi which administrates the, um, the e-commerce infrastructure and uh, it, it allows to conveniently sell through any kind of connected device. And um, that's what we basically do as a product offering. Um, so how do we make money? Because I think um, that's really the important piece. As a bootstrap company, we obviously made it needed to make sure that we actually um, are able to pay our bills. And um, that was something that we focused on uh, right from the start. And uh, we basically take a revenue share. So um, whenever a product is, is being bought, we actually get a certain revenue share out of it. And we've done this very profitably for um, our clients as well as for ourselves and have enabled them to actually penetrate the international markets. Um, 
we, we, the, the business model is profitable, as I mentioned, um, uh, and, and it makes me sleep very, very happily ever after because um, obviously being able to pay bills without having to worry about uh, the cash flow is, is very comfortable situation. Um, this year we're going to be reaching a, a very significant target for us and that's going to be a 1 million transactions on a monthly basis. Um, that is significantly more than the, the, the 500 orders that we uh, processed in 2005. Um, uh, the thing is, we, we have a cash register in, in Germany that runs in our, uh, in, in our infrastructure, uh, which, which does a ka sound every single time that a, uh, a product is being sold. So I'm very happy to be here today because 25 times a minute is really a pain in, uh, in the ear, as you can imagine. And um, so uh, since, since the initial client that we actually got online, um, we were able to acquire um, uh, now above 300 clients internationally and some of the brand names you're probably familiar with are uh, companies like WinZip, Sonic Roxio, or Cronus, uh, Trend Micro, and there's still plenty of opportunity in this market if we're taking a look at um, what the guys from Forrester are actually assuming uh, where the market is going to go to. Um, there's, there's tons of, uh, of, of revenue to be made in this, in, in this market. Um, there's a lot of competition in, in the market as well. There's a little bit of crowding out happening. Um, but uh, there's, there's still no saturation um, in this market. Um, there's plenty of room uh, to, to actually expand and there's, it, it's, it's really dynamic and uh, obviously you're, you're seeing additional channels actually evolve, um, such as the walled gardens with, with Apple, Google and, and, and Microsoft, um, but we only consider these as additional, additional channels that, uh, that are being utilized by our, um, uh, by our peers. Um, from the competitive side, I mean, you have everything ranging from completely outsourced solutions uh, into um, uh, full-fledged in-house solutions, and any permutation in between is obviously possible. Um, we, we see stock-listed companies. We also have privately held companies that are in this market space. We have smaller local uh, players as well as uh, very small niche players that are just offering a couple of features in this market. Um, the good thing about this is that um, the, the uh, complexities are growing substantially in this market. So you have a lot of taxation, international revenue uh, recognition and reconciliation, um, as well as uh, compliancy topics and regular regulatory authorities that are actually placing a heavy burden on anybody that's running e-commerce on an international scale. But it's a, ta it's a challenge that we've been taking up for the past seven years and we've successfully done this and we're really happy with, with doing that. Now, to get more into the KPIs and the financials, I already shared a couple of details about the, the 2005 and 2006 numbers. We went from uh, originally 15,000 euros uh, up to uh, almost 6 million in 2006. In 2007, we were able to kick this up to 21 million. Uh, in 2008, we were just shy of 50 million, and in 2009, it was already at 90 million in revenue. 2010 marked uh, the first time that we went above the 100 million um, th threshold. In 2011, we actually went up to 221 million. <clears throat> um, important to know is that as of 2007, in January, we actually reached our profitable, uh, profitability, and uh, we've never left the, the path of this um, throughout the course of the existence of a company. Uh, important for us was to make sure that we actually do the right hires for the company and, and ensure that we have the right talent and the right team in place and uh, in order to uh, ensure that the quality is right and really be able to build a sustainable business model for, for our clients. Um, we have a client retention rate over the past seven years of 99%. I think that speaks for itself. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm actually, I think we lost a U.S. client once, so that's why I'm here in, in, in the U.S. as well to try and figure out how I can win this one back. Um, we've just opened our, uh, our Japan office, as I mentioned to you, five months ago, and we're seeing big traction over there. We're already generating um, in excess of 12% of our revenues down there in the Asia-Pacific uh, region, and it's a big, big opportunity, and we're seeing a lot of steps being taken into the right direction. Um, also in markets um, uh, such as China, where it's just only just starting uh, to pick up. 25% uh, of our revenues are being generated through SaaS models, um, which is basically um, uh, something you know, where we're seeing uh, that the market is going to be moving. The perpetual license model is always going to be exist in, existing in parallel to it. Um, but um, I think it's an important uh, point that, that we actually service these, these entities as well. Um, Roughly 35% of our revenue is generated over here in the U.S. already, and um, I'm quite confident that um, over the next couple of years we're going to be able to um, continue our growth, which over the past five years has been 900%. Now, obviously, 
Um, that is uh, a big number and we're not going to be able to sustain that, but I think uh, in excess of 30% is something that is, is totally acceptable for us and uh, we're actually looking forward to, to growing that. Now, what are we going to do when, when, um, uh, in, in the future and what's the outlook for our market? Um, obviously, we're going to be investing, uh, continue investing in adjacent markets such as SaaS, games, and media. Um, we're looking at the expansion on a regional basis. Uh, APEC was one of the initiatives. LATAM is definitely something where we're seeing a lot of traction. Brazilian market uh, is extremely strong and growing. Um, we're going to continue growing in the uh, existing markets, the SMB, and we're going to move up into the enterprise level. Um, there's still the B2C is, is something where we're really active and B2B is only just really moving into this segment. Um, they're, they're just beginning to embrace this channel. Um, I, I don't think if ever, anybody in, in this room has ever bought an Oracle license online, um, but I think that's going to happen sometime soon. It's just going to be a matter of time before that actually will work out. Um, in addition to that, we're um, obviously going to be doing professional services and, and, and business development. This goes into all sorts of directions, whether this is uh, checkout optimization based on, on data analytics that we do in the background, um, business development in order to assist um, uh, our clients to penetrate new markets, and there's also potential of looking into the physical side at a later stage. So all in all, there's a lot of growth possible here. Um, it was great sharing our story with you, and uh, if anybody would like to talk to me, I'm going to be here throughout the conference, and um, yeah, we'll catch up later on. Thanks.